what did you say, YouTube addictive junkies? What would say? Good to see y'all back here again today. We're gonna make uh, a couple of more attempts to get this uh, Salmon uh, Patrick guitar a little bit closer to playability again. Uh, not gonna set it up for a while yet. This video, I'm gonna install the strap button. You remember when the guitar came in and it had the strap here tied up here around the headstock? And I mentioned that to the owner. I said, that's uh, not good to, you know, hang a guitar on you like that. And he said, put a strap button on it. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I've got a video or two up doing that already. But I thought, yeah, I might as well show you again. The new subscribers maybe you didn't see that video. And it's getting old now anyway, like all of us. And probably we'll put men's seat oil on the board. And then the next video, if, I, well, if I'm not too tired, I might do it on this one. It's, put some CA glue in this crack back here. Uh... I want to look at that a little bit closer again one more time before I put CA glue into it. But if we if we get to that, we'll do it. But we're going to put in the strap button and then we can see the fretboard. And uh, it'll be that much closer to ready to go back home. I figured the guy's probably wanting his guitar. It's been here since before I got sick. So anyways, let's do it. Let's do it! Now this is not a how-to install strap button video. I think my other one might have been. This is not. This one is not. This is a... a more of a how I install install a strap button. First thing we got to do is get our depth of that screw. And I have a quarter inch or one eighth inch bit here. And uh, all, all you got to do is just hold this the bit up to the screw like that. And right there's our depth. I'm, I'm marking it with my thumbnail. Okay. Marking it with my thumbnail, and then I'm just going to wrap a piece of tape around the uh, thing, and then double check. Just wrap a piece of painter's tape on it, and I missed it a little bit. I need to move that. It's just a little bit too deep. You don't want to go any deeper. There's no need to go any deeper than what that screw is. And I moved it. Moved it too much, wouldn't you know, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm still sick, baby. Can't think. Head's all clogged up with snot. Okay, there you go. Now you can see I marked uh, with the tape there. If I hold the screw right up to it, if I can get it in the camera. See, we got a depth mark. We drill in until the tape hits the wood. And uh, I mean, I'll bring you back for that. I got to get the drill ready. It's, it was charging there. You probably heard it humming. Anyways, uh, probably we'll just get this put on today and the wind seed. And that's probably all we'll do because I'm so weak and candy ass. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I gotta get down here where I can see, man. All right, this is this is not rocket science here. I mean, you know, but you do want to get it in the right place. Uh, this side of the guitar is the high E string side, okay? That side up there, on this side, is the low E string side. So putting the strap on, you know, the opposite side of the heel, the strap's going to come down and around the heel. This helps hold it on there better. It's where all the acoustic players like them. Basically, what I do is uh, determine about midway of here, you know, to here, this area right here, about the center of this, which would be about right there. And then I come out around here to the center of, uh, between the center of the center of the heel here and uh, this end of it, the end of the neck right there. So come down about the center of this area here, come around here, and I, that's where I want to put my tape. I always like to put tape on it because I can mark that. And, okay, see I'm coming from the center here. I almost missed it, didn't I? Out to right here. That's actually exactly where we want the strap button to go. Uh, but yeah, basically you come down to the center of this this body right there, and then you move up here, not to the center of it up here. Though I've seen I've seen straps like that put right there, and they don't hold very well. If you put it too far back here, the, the guitar wants to kind of the top low E string kind of hang down away from you if you get it too far in the other direction it's just uh, believe me the center of this this area and this area 
it's where you want to go. I've always had better luck with that, doing it that way. Now I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you this because I need to get in there. You know what I mean? I need to get glasses on first. Hold on. Let me get the shit together here a little better, you'd think. I mean, as long as I've been making videos. Sorry, folks. But i got to have these glasses on, man. It just takes a moment to put them on. It's done deal, see? <laughs> All right. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you because, like I say, i got to get in there and I have to be able to see. And right... No, oh, that's a big, heavy drill for this. Right there is where we want to drill at. Make sure I'm squared up with the guitar. Also, you want to drill backwards first. Almost forgot to set that drill. You want to drill just a little bit backwards. Right there. And that's enough. Now we want to drill in to our tape hits. There you go. It should uh, drill them backwards like that and adding the tape keeps from scarring up your finish when you do that. See there's no nothing done to the finish there at all. Didn't even, didn't even hurt the finish. None whatsoever. Now I got the strap button and felt here. And a giant screwdriver. I'm still weak, man. I don't have enough energy to to do anything yet. Still can't breathe. Still cannot breathe, baby. I'd say that's an eight one eighth inch drill bit, and it's working out perfectly. Felt note. Yeah, there we go. And you just want to snug it up. You don't want to screw it in there like you're screwing a wood screw in. Boy, that did smash that fell out big. That's okay. It'll shrink probably with time. And that is the way I, not how to, but how I install a strap button and acoustic guitar. And there you go. Zoom in, let you have a look at it. That felt looks pretty funky. I might try to trim that up. I'll probably leave it alone because it, it'll shrink over time. It's just squashed out right now. Hold on. Well, let's see if the strap fits on it. He had this string tied around the uh, headstock. That's a. I even got videos on that, man. You never want to do that. Wow, that's going to be a tight fit. It is going to be tight. I think I'm going to have to cut that hole out a little bit. Yeah, let me get a exacto knife hold on always something made it all right i didn't cut it out maybe now it should go on there a little bit easier oh, man still very tight and there you go of course he'll have to adjust it when he gets gets it hung on him <laughs> adjust the strap i'm talking about looks like it's about as long as it'll go right there now yeah that's as long as it'll go Get that away from the guitar. That buckle. I like straps with plastic buckles on them instead of these metal ones or brass or whatever that is because they'll, they'll really rip the guitar finish up if you're not careful. Hold on. Uh, i got to get linseed and, and towels and things of that nature. <laughs> <coughs> question comes up an awful lot. And there's a lot of argument about boiled or unboiled linseed for this. Folks, I have done this for 30 years or more than that. And... It does not make a difference if it's boiled or not boiled. You can argue it all day long. I've used them both. Same results every time. So you can see what this looks like. That's what the bottle looks like. They make different brands of it, all kinds. This is boiled, but, you know, like I say, I've used them all. I mean, I've been doing this a lot, lot, lot of years. Oh, that thing sticks every time in there, man. Wow. That I'm talking about. And uh, it's, it doesn't make any difference. You get the very same result whether it's boiled or not boiled. And people will argue that. You'll see it in the comments, I'm sure. 
but I'm telling you, I did it for years and years and years. There's a hair in there. And it don't make any difference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. It won't matter to you either. All right. I'll just take a paper towel. You can see how that solidifies around the, uh, the threads. See that? That same thing happens on your fretboard. You know, there's videos about, you know, oil collects dust and it's just messy and nasty. Well, no. This oil doesn't collect dust. You rub it on. I wait five minutes, three to five minutes, and then rub it off. And it solidifies. It's like finish. And it, it's not going to collect any dust. In fact, dust is just going to fall off of it. Those people saying that stuff, those channels, well, they might tell you something like, how to shim your neck without using a shim. <laughs> you want to rub across the grain. Man, these frets are just gorgeous on this guitar. You want to rub across the grain of this wood, okay, when you do this. If you rub with the grain, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to rub it right out of the cracks, right out of the grain, right out of any open grain that, that it got into. So you want to rub it across, and that makes a nice level uh, application. Make sure I'm in the camera. Make sure you can see. And you don't have to put it on there very heavy. I mean, you know, you don't even have to do this very often. Once a year is plenty. You can get by with a couple times a year if you feel you need to. <laughs> or if your board looks dry. I'm not getting all the way up to those, all those frets. Man, those frets are just gorgeous on this guitar now. They, they do look brand new. Devin thought the guy owned that uh, D15. I did the frets on it. He said, man, wow. He thought I put new frets in it. These look that way. But yeah, I rub this stuff across the grain. And pay no attention to those channels that tell you to never use oil on your fretboards. I'm the guy with the dead animal heads on the wall, remember? Now I'm going to put it on the ridge, too. Light application, rubbing across the grain there. And there it is. It's a done deal. I just need to get a couple of frets there. I see I didn't get all the way up to them. I'm going to leave that on there. I don't know how that's showing up in the camera. Maybe you can see it. If the fretboard's really dry, it will, uh, you can see that stuff, man, being absorbed by the fretboard. If the fretboard's really dry, and this one looks like it is, so maybe I can show you that on camera here. It'd be like the one time I try to show it, it won't show. It won't happen. But usually you can see it soaking into the uh, rosewood in this case. Uh, give it a few minutes. I like to give it three to five minutes. Watch it, see what happens, and then rub it across the grain. Rub it off with a clean rag, not the same one you used to put it on there. And if you get it on your finish, I, I hear that a question comes up a lot. Is it going to hurt my finish? Will it ruin my finish? No, it will not hurt your finish. But get it off of there, man. As quickly as you see that you got it on there, get it off. Because it'll solidify, and it'll be like melted finish right there. And you'll have a really hard time getting it off after that. I'm going to stop the camera. And uh, bring you back when this starts to soak in. Maybe we'll try to show you how it looks when, if, if the board's dry. I wish this one is, but it's not soaking it in like I thought it would. But if it does start, I'll bring you back in a few minutes and show you. Hold on. <laughs> Humidity is high here. It's always high here. It's a top number, 69%. So this stuff is not going to dry like it normally would. But I wanted to show you. It's a stupid camera focus. There you go. See all that open grain? Now, as I wipe that off, I haven't wiped it off yet, and I wipe across the grain like that, that just levels the fretboard off with that open grain, and it leaves the oil down in there, plus it leaves a little coat of oil all over the uh, fretboard. It's not, uh, it's not sucking it up like I thought it would, but there again, the humidity's near 70%. But, uh, you know, it, yeah, right now it could collect dust, but there's no dust in here. But when I wipe it off and it solidifies, it's not going to collect any dust, folks. Unlike those channels that tell you to shim your electric guitar neck from the back. Put the shim under the, uh, the neck plate. 
Holy shit. I mean, that, that's just stupid. Hold on. I guess it's no more stupid than that stupid channel is. <laughs> and the operator. Alright, it's been five minutes and it's still not soaking it in very well. I mean, you know, I'm Randy. I'm the guy with the, uh, Randy with the dead animal heads on the wall. I know this shit. <laughs> now I'm going to rub, like I said, I'm going to rub across the grain. Just rub lightly. Very lightly. You don't have to keep finding clean spots on your, your towel. You want to keep using the same spot, actually. And just rub that lightly and it'll force that linseed oil down into those open grains that you can see clearly under the, uh, just a minute ago when I showed you. <laughs> if I rubbed it this way with the grain, see, I, I, it's a good chance I'm probably just rubbing it out of the grain. And you don't want that. You want to feel that grain with this stuff. And like I say, when it solidifies, it's just like finish. And it will protect that board. And no dust is going to stick to it, dumbass. Wow. I can't believe well, that video of the shim, it was taken down. I think it was laughed at so much he had to take it down. But in fact, the whole channel's not active much anymore. You know, it's easy to see why. <laughs> wow, man. Attackers on YouTube. Trolls on YouTube. They always come out of the woodwork, don't they? If they see something that they don't understand. <laughs> Don't agree with. Man, these frets look good. Look how much nicer that looks. I mean, look, man. And it's protected. It don't, don't, not only looks nice, but it's protected too from the environment getting into those grains. And fretboards will crack. I'm telling you, I've had people tell me, well, I've had this guitar for 30 years. I never oiled a fretboard, and it ain't nothing ever happened. Well, that, those people have been very lucky, man. The fretboard has not cracked. I'll show you a picture of a cracked one right here. And it was because it wasn't cared for. Now I'm going to have to use a different part of the rag for this because I had to rub crossways. Humidity and heat has been killer here, and I'm weak anyway from being so sick. And there you go. It's protected. It'll take care of itself for the next year. At least six to eight months or so. Hold on. <laughs> Dispose of your linseed cloths properly. Now, I'll take them in there and run them under the, the faucet and get them soaking wet, wring them out. And wring them out good and get them soaking wet, man, soaking wet, and don't wring them out and throw them away. You don't want to throw them away with that linseed in there. That stuff can, uh, it can uh, combust. That strap is way short, man. Well, maybe not. There you go. That's what it looked like. I'll show you the strap button one more time. There you go, that's the way they should look. That's exactly in the right place it should be. It's in the center there, in the center of the, uh, from the uh, center of the heel to the body side of the guitar. It's as simple as that. It's got a nice strap on it. No more hanging the weight of the guitar. If you, hang, if you run your strap up here and tie that on the way that was, then you're, when you're holding your guitar, or you got it strapped on you, and the strap comes from all the way back here, all the way up here, you're putting more stress on this area right here where the neck joint and uh, dovetail usually. You know, that's already got a lot of stress. I've said it before. I said, you got all those glue joints right here, man. You got your neck block inside. You got the dovetail. Well, this one's a bolt on it. It's probably got a, a mortise tenon neck on it. But still, you know, you don't want to put any more stress on this area right here with all of these glue joints. you got your side, your top, your back, the neck uh, block, the neck joint. And in this case, it's not glued, it's bolted on. But still, you don't want to put all that stress, added stress. The strings are stress enough. And right here is proof of it because of this crack right here. And that's what we're going to do on the next video. We're going to uh, drop the CA in that clack, crack, clack. And I want to see... If uh, 
I want to check it, squeeze it together, and see, you know, if it moves any as I squeeze, like, uh, from the, the back to the top. You know what I mean? And, uh, if it moves, I'll have to clamp it, but I don't think it will, because it's solid as a rock. How you doing, baby cue ball? You got a fix for the folks? Huh? See you next time, folks. We'll glue the crack and then set it up, and this guitar's going to go bye-bye. I'm sure the owner's ready. All right. Thanks. Cheers. What? Thanks for watching. You smell like a young new puppy. Yes, you smell like a little puppy. Tell the YouTube family. Say, we love you. How's that? Say again. I love you. get too excited and she won't do it. Um, what? I love you. Wait a minute. What'd you say? Oh. What is it? I love you. Tell Tell Say again. Say again. Oh, no.